Okay, let's start. So we were looking at approximation algorithm. So I'll just give a brief recap of what we were trying to do. So we saw all these techniques to design polynomial time algorithms, and we also saw some reductions. Right. So saw uh, greedy approach, dynamic programming, and divide and conquer. Right. That can help you design polynomial time algorithms, and if you are Face with some unknown problem, then you try to reduce it to some known problem. But even after that, there are some problems for which you can, we don't know of any good way of designing exact solutions in polynomial time. Okay, these are specifically the NP complete problems. Right? So if you can design exact polynomial time solutions for that, then a lot of hard problems will also have polynomial time solutions. And so what do we do for such problems? Okay. So for that, we need this notion of approximation algorithms in that we accept that, okay, finding an solution might be hard, but we are happy with approximate solutions. Okay. So we'll try to design approximate outputs uh, in polynomial time. We try to find approximate outputs in polynomial time. And how do we do that? That's the main issue here okay. and so we started with a simple approximation algorithm which is for this vertex cover problem and vertex cover is uh, we have encountered it many times during reductions as well we tried to reduce vertex cover to certain other interesting graph problems like dominating set clique etc okay. so this is what vertex cover is defined like uh, it is we are given an undirected graph set of vertices and edges. And we want to find the subset of vertices such that for every edge, one of its endpoints must be contained in our subset. Okay. We are interested in finding the vertex cover of minimum cardinality. Okay. And this was the algorithm we tried to design is that we select the subset of edges M such that M is as large as possible and no two edges in M are adjacent. So by adjacency, I mean that uh, no two edges share some endpoint. Okay. So how do we construct this set M? And just for your knowledge, M is also called a maximal matching. Okay. So that is why I selected this alphabet M is because in literature it's also known as maximal match okay so how do we find this set m of edges is that we up apply some greedy approach we arbitrarily choose an edge let's say i chose bc and then we delete all the edges which are incident with bc so you can delete a b c e c d okay then again you choose another edge and delete all the edges which are incident with that edge. So let's say we chose EF. So we further deleted ED and DF, and finally there is only one edge remaining, DG. Okay. So this is what our subset of edges. It is as large as possible, BC, EF, and DG. Now, if you try to add another edge, it will be incident. So that uh, that we claim is a good approximation to the original vertex cover problem. Okay. Because if we pick both the endpoints, then whatever edges are there in this set M, they are anyways covered. And whatever edges are not there, 
they are anyways incident with one of these edges. So they will have one endpoint of these edges in common. And since we are picking both the endpoints, all those edges will be covered as well. Okay. And therefore, if you pick both the endpoints of these edges, uh, we will get a vertex cover. And what we are saying is that this will be a two approximation to the vertex cover problem. In fact, whatever, in fact, approximation algorithms come in two varieties. One is called the additive approximation and the other is called multiplicative approximation. Okay. So multiplicative approximation means that your final approximation will be some constant times the optimal value. Okay. And additive is obviously C plus some constant plus the optimum value. But in this course, we will only because of lack of time. In fact, this topic of approximation algorithm deserves an entire course. Uh, but we don't have the time to uh, go in that much detail. So we'll see some three, four examples of how to design and then we'll be with it. Okay. Uh, so we'll, we are just interested in multiplicative approximations in this course, which is that you try to design algorithms where Whatever value you output, it is some constant times the optimal. Okay. And in this case, we see that if we output the so here our vertex cover is this thing. We output both the endpoints of the edges which we have selected. So the edges which we have selected are B C, E F, and D G. Okay. So we output both the endpoints, which is B C, E F, and D G. Now, how does this chosen set compare with the original, uh, with the optimum vertex cover? Okay. So, what are the conditions the optimum vertex cover must satisfy? Is that it anyways must cover all, all these edges, B, C, E, F, and D, G. So, at least one of these endpoints must be contained in our vertex cover. So, at least one of B, C, at least one of E, F, and at least one of D, G must be contained in our optimal vertex cover. Otherwise, it will not cover one of these edges. And therefore, in our algorithm, we are picking both the endpoints, but at least one of them should be contained in app optimal vertex cover. Okay. So our final vertex cover, which we are outputting, it must be of size at most double the size of the optimum vertex. So we have shown that the set C returned by the algorithm is a vertex cover. It is a polynomial time algorithm, right? Because this is a O of E algorithm, right? You picked one edge, deleted all the adjacent edges, again picked one edge. So in order of E time, you can find this vertex cover. And it is at most twice the size of the optimum vertex cover, right? So this is straightforward it's very simple and so how did we prove is that in the optimum vertex cover at least one vertex from each edge in m is needed right so optimum size will be at least the number of edges in m and in our algorithm we are outputting both endpoints of every edge in m so we are returning two times m vertices okay. and therefore what the size of our vertex cover will be two times m, which is at most two times optimum, because optimum is always larger than m. And therefore, this is a factor two approximation for the uh, vertex cover problem. Okay. Or we won't always mention factors. So two approximation means the size is at most double the uh, size of the optimum vertex cover. Okay, so this is what we did in the last class, and now we'll see another problem, which is also very well known. It's the traveling salesman problem. Okay. So this is complete graph. In fact, we could take any arbitrary graph, but you can always make it complete, right? Because if you don't have an edge between those two vertices, then you add an edge of weight infinity between those two vertices, right? So without loss of generality, we can assume that 
the graph is always complete and uh, only that we can allow infinity weighted. Okay, so you have some edge first, we for each edge p, and you want to find a tool that visits every vertex of G exactly once and return to the starting vertex. Okay. So you can think of it as some salesman. He starts from an origin city and goes to every other city, but he doesn't want to return back to any other such city. So he wants to visit them exactly once and then finally return back to the original city. But he wants, also wants to cover all these cities. So what we want is we are given the distance between any two cities and we want to visit every city exactly once and return back to our original city. Okay, so you are given these distances and you want to find the minimum cost of such a tool. Okay. So one such tour is given by the red edges here. This is our origin city. Go to this city, this city, this city, this city, come back to the original city. So we have visited every city exactly once and we have returned back to the original city. And the cost of the tour is the sum of the weights of the edges. Right? So in this case, it is 1 plus 2 plus 5 plus 6 plus 2. So it's 16. We want the minimum cost of such a tool. So this is what the traveling salesman problem is. And obviously, this is another NP-complete problem. It is hard to find the exact cost of minimum cost of such a tool. Okay. So if you are interested in approximation algorithms for that, can we just approximate in polynomial uh, minimum cost of such a tool? Okay. That's the problem we are interested in. And in this version, we are only interested in the metric version of the traveling salesman problem, uh, which is that the edge cost satisfy the triangle inequality. So what this says is that, so this is not entirely accurate. So in fact, what I mean here is this edges AB plus BC is greater than or equal to AC. So if I want to go from city A to city C, a reasonable assumption is that I directly go from A to C instead of going via A to B and B to C. Okay. And this is a normal assumption. Let's say you want to go from Ahmedabad to Mumbai. You are not going to go via some city. You won't go from Ahmedabad to Indore and then Indore to Mumbai. Obviously, it will result in a larger distance to be covered. You can directly go from Ahmedabad to Mumbai. So just an example to make sense of this assumption is that it's not any arbitrary assumption. It also appears in practice. Okay. So we are considering this metric version of the TSP, the edge cost satisfy the triangle inequality. And notice that, that we don't have any isolated vertices. But it's a complete graph. So there is an edge between every pair of vertices and all these edges have some weights. Okay. Even those boundary cases, if there is some isolated vertex, you can just assign those edge weights to infinity. This is a common trick which you use in algorithms. But then the minimum cost weight will ob obviously be infinity because if there is some corner vertex which is not connected to any other thing, so you can't visit that uh, vertex by just traversing the edge. Right? So the minimum cost tour will always be infinite in that case. But let's assume that these are all integral weights, like in this case, they are all integral weights. Okay? And we also have these weights satisfying this triangle inequality. So A plus B is always greater than equal to C, A plus C is always greater than equal to B. So you can think of these uh, A, B, C as edges. Okay? And a, B plus C is always greater than equal Okay. So if you want to visit the city C from city A, the cheapest tour is to directly go from A to C and not via some other city, A to B and B to C. Okay. Uh, now we want to design an approximation algorithm for this traveling salesman problem in the metric version. Okay. 
okay so let's just look at this example if i wanted to actually find this two of minimum cost and how can i do it in polynomial time or at least approximate minimum two uh, in polynomial time okay so how can i give a polynomial time algorithm for this case yeah tell me if you have any ideas Any algorithm we have seen in this course uh, can be applied to solve this minimum cost uh, to Dijkstra, oh, how will you use Dijkstra? So you find you will find the shortest path somewhere. Yeah, I don't know anything based on Dijkstra. It would be interesting to know what the exact idea is. So what I assume the idea might be is that start with the original vertex and then find the minimum cost edge first. So here the minimum is one. And then you take the next minimum, which is two. And then traverse it this way. Uh, but this doesn't work always is because Sometimes it backfires, okay? Uh, it's because you can construct some things where uh, it is better to go via a larger weight edge because if you choose a smaller weight edge at that instance, you might run into visiting some vertex twice or thrice. Okay. So that particular greedy approach doesn't always work. So we have to be more careful. Okay. 
So somehow you have to use this triangle inequality also, right? In this problem, that a plus b, if these are the edges, a plus b is always greater than or equal to c. A plus c is always greater than or equal to b. B plus c is always greater than or equal to a. So how is this going to come into play? That's the main issue with this problem. Okay, so we have something more. Yeah, DFS traversal, that is a good idea. Yes, and exactly, but uh, we won't use DFS directly. Uh, so there is some more work initially you have to do. Okay, that's an excellent idea. So yeah, use sort of DFS later. So the thing is, we want the minimum cost too here, okay? not just arbitrary. You select some edge and apply DFS here. Right? So, how exactly are we going to find that minimum cost? Too? Okay. Yes, so there is uh, one more idea, which is minimum spanning tree, and that's exactly the algorithm. So I'll combine the ideas of two of you. Okay, so you use uh, construct a minimum spanning tree first, and okay, from G you compute one minimum spanning tree. Okay, so let's say all these black edges, so they are all colored with different colors, but let's say this is our minimum spanning tree a b b c b h a d b e e f and e g okay and, and once you have this minimum spanning tree and then you start with your one vertex and apply a dfs search okay and once you have that dfs now the problem with DFS is, is that it might visit some vertex multiple times. Maybe some vertices are visited twice, right? Because when you are backtracking. Okay, so for instance, let me start from A. Uh, so, so how will a DFS search look like? Is that uh, you go from A to B, B to C, then you see there is nothing and backtrack C to B, B to H, right? Then again, you go backtrack H to B, B to A, and then go this way, A, D, D, A, E, F, then F, there is nothing. So F, you go back to E, and then finally go from E to G, okay? Uh, but the good thing of DFS is that every H will be visited at most twice, right? So you won't visit any H more than twice. Uh, but the problem with performing direct DFS is, is that you might visit the city maybe some twice or thrice, right? Or in fact, only twice, because every edge you are visiting only two times, at most twice. Okay, and that's where that triangle inequality will come into play. Okay. Um, where uh, we said that if there is some triangle, then instead of going from C to B and B to H, we will take this direct edge, C to H. Okay. So what my final tour will be, it is given by these red edges. 
okay uh, so let's say i perform this bfs right now how will i get the final two so these blue edges are denoting uh, or rather these green edges are denoting my depth cluster right so i went from a to b then b to c c then i backtracked from c to b and then went to b to h so this is a typical depth cluster which we are doing here but i can avoid going doing this backtracking step right because instead of going to c to b and then b to h i can replace it by c to h right so what i've done is i went from a to b then b to c then c to h no other city is visited twice and because of this frangal inequality the distance from c to h is always less than c to b and b to h okay and then again i did this backtracking in my dfs search is that i went from h to b but b i can't go because i have already visited then i went from b to a a again i can't go because it's already visited then we went to h a to d right so d is visited for the first time so instead of that i'll directly go from h to d okay and why is h to d a smaller distance than h to b and b to a and a to d right so you apply triangle inequality twice here right so instead of going from h to b and b to a i could directly go from h to a that is the smaller distance and instead of going from h to a and a to d i could directly go from h to d that is will be a smaller distance okay then again i go from d to e in my depth first search even in my tour i'll go from d to e and again perform step first search now again there is this problem that i go from e to f then backtrack f to e and then go to e to g okay so instead of this backtracking step f to e and e to g i could go from f to e g directly that distance will be smaller than the distance covered from f to e and e to g then finally you return back to your original vertex e to g my final tour will be like this uh, go from a to b b to c c to h h to d d to e e to f f to g and then return back to my original set g to a and it will always be smaller than this distance g to e e to d and d to a it will be smaller than this thing so if i go from g to a directly it will be smaller than g to e e to d and d to a right so because you can apply this triangle inequality twice so there is a question yeah wherever you find that some vertex is stop coming twice or whenever you are backtracking that means you have to use that triangle inequality right so because that's the condition of the problem uh, that uh, you are not allowed to visit any city twice So I hope the algorithm is clear what we are trying to do here. Right? So whenever you see a back edge or whenever you are visiting some other city twice, you apply this triangle equal. So here instead of going from G to E, E to D, in D to A, we could directly go from G to A. Okay. A uh, very straightforward approximation algorithm. Now, now we obviously want to analyze how good it is compared to the optimal two. One more question. Uh, 
uh, there can be a chance that there is no edge between C and H. Uh, we will just add an infinity weight edge okay, when there is no edge. Okay. So yeah, it is uh, not that good, uh, but that's why we introduced this triangle inequality. Okay. So we want to avoid these cases where there is an edge from C to B and B to H and there is no edge from C to H. Okay. So we always want this triangle inequality is that distance from C to H is always less than C to B and B to H. Right. So we are not designing an approximation algorithm in the general case. These weights are specifically chosen so that this satisfy the triangle inequality. And yeah, general case TSP is, uh, there are more complicated algorithms, but we won't go into that in this course. I'm just interested in this specific case where all these weights satisfy the triangle inequality. Okay, so I hope the algorithm is clear. So any other questions on this algorithm? how it is working uh, and yeah, because we, before we analyze you should have a clarity in your mind that what exactly we are doing and why we are doing that specific thing Okay, one more question. Uh, we design a path in such a way that triangle inequality satisfies. No, we are given this triangle inequality. It's a part of the problem and we want to design our path using this triangle inequality. So, triangle inequality is part of the input. Okay, great. So, I think all of you are clear with what we are doing. Uh, now, obviously, just designing this algorithm is not enough. We have to compare it with the uh, optimal uh, minimum size too. Okay. Right. So, how good an approximation is this tool? Right. So. What is your guess? So let's say I have some op optimum tool. And so what is the constant factor here? Right? Because this is just approximately minimum weight too. Uh, we need to uh, compare it with the optimum, right? Just designing the algorithm is not enough. Uh, you want to show that it's a really good tool that we are constructing using this algorithm. So how will we argue about uh, uh, 
what factor it is compared to the optimum tool. So, we have to use this property of DFS here, is that every edge is visited at most twice, okay? Uh, because we are backtracking only once, right? After that, there is no need to go to that edge again, right? So, every edge, whether it is A, B, B, C, B, H, or whichever, is visited at most twice in our walk, right? Using using DF, right? Because once we backtrack on that, we don't need to traverse over that edge again. Okay, and so one would believe that this is a two approximation for the original two, uh, but obviously we need to formally prove it. So let opt be the value of the optimum tool. Okay, so this is the tool which we have constructed. So W is the walk taken by DFS. Okay, so we did all this, performed a DFS search from A, and we got some walk. We went from A to B, B to C, then we went back from C to B, B to H, H to B, and so on. Okay, so some edges we are visiting again and again. So that is a walk. And by applying the triangle inequality, what we got was this uh, tool, which we designed by H. Okay. Okay. So all of you are convinced that H is a tool, right? Uh, because we are visiting every vertex at, uh, by applying this triangle inequality, we are visiting every vertex exactly once. Because the original DFS thing was visiting every vertex, just that it was visiting some edges more than once. By applying the triangle inequality, we have ensured that every vertex is visited exactly once. So H is always a two. And what about the time taken by this algorithm? First, we computed a minimum spanning tree. We can use Kruskal's or Prim's algorithm for that. And we know how to do it in polynomial time. And DFS again takes polynomial time. So overall, the algorithm will always take polynomial time. Okay. By studying the DFS ordering, we can also see where we can, we have to apply this triangle inequality. Okay. So overall, the algorithm will always take polynomial time. And what we want is that the tool which we got in this way, it is at most double the cost of the optimum tool. So, how do we do this? That's what we want to see. Cost of H is at most double the cost of the optimum. So, I'll just introduce some notation. Let's say first you started with minimum spanning tree, and then I walk through this minimum spanning tree using depth first search. Okay, applied a round of DFS. So what do we know right now? Let's say T is the minimum spanning tree. Okay, and when I traverse these edges via this DFS, I got this walk W. Every edge is visited at most twice in this walk. Right. So uh, cost of W. In fact, it is at most twice the cost of t i think because uh, in dfs there might be a single path and then you don't have to visit anything no but you are returning back to the original vertex so you have to visit every vertex twice 
and therefore we can say that the cost of this walk is twice the cost of t okay so cost of t is just the sum of the weights of the edges in the minimum spanning okay there is a question Uh, what if node B has three branches? Then it will be visited thrice. Uh, no, so here we are interested in uh, the sum of the weights of the edges. So I'm saying that every edge will be visited twice, at most twice. Okay. The vertex might be visited twice or larger, uh, but every edge will be visited at most twice. Because cost of this walk doesn't include how many times you are visiting that particular vertex. And uh, in fact, it doesn't even matter because when we apply the triangle inequality, we'll ensure that every vertex is visited only once. Okay. So cost of W is uh, because every edge is visited twice. So cost of W will be double the cost of this. And then what we did was this, uh, we found this final two cost of x. Okay. So what happened in this cost of x is that we applied this triangle inequality and went directly from an edge, f to g, right? So instead of going from f to e and e to g, we went f to g. And because of the triangle inequality, we are guaranteed that the cost of f to g is smaller than F to E and E to G. Okay. So we are shortcutting some of the walks or sub walks in W. Okay. So what we know is that the final tour which we obtain, cost of it, that will be at most cost of W. And this is a consequence of the triangle inequality. Okay. So this inequality comes, this equality comes from the minimum span tree computation part and obviously DFS and this inequality comes from the triangle inequality. And we just compare these two things and so we get that cost of H is at most the twice the cost of T. Okay, so we have compared our final thing uh, with the cost of the minimum spanning tree here. Okay. Now, how do we compare the weight of this minimum or cost of this minimum spanning tree uh, with the tool uh, uh, which we have obtained, okay, with the optimal tool? Right, so why did we go over minimum spanning tree in the first place to compare this optimal? To what is the connection of uh, minimum spanning tree with this optimal tool? Because let's say we look at this tool in red edges, A, B, B, C, C, H, H, D, D, E, E, F, F, G, and G, A. Right, it is a cycle just one cycle which we have here and if you delete any one edge what we will get is a tree right because then there will be a unique path between any two vertices in this two edge right and if you delete any one edge you will get a tree and therefore we are computing this minimum span tree because it is the minimum weight of a tree which is traversing all the vertices, right? And that's what happens. When you delete one edge from this tour edge, you will get a tree which is traversing all the vertices. Okay. 
So opt is an optimal tool and we removed one edge from uh, opt so that opt minus E will be a tree. And we are not picking any tree, any arbitrary tree. We are picking the minimum spend. Tree. Okay, so T is a tree of minimum cost. So the cost of tree, cost of T will be at most the cost of optimum minus E. Okay, because this was another tree which was traversing all the vertices, opt minus E. And since we are looking at the minimum span tree, cost of T, at most cost of optimum minus E. So this is our what, fourth equation we have. And from the third thing, so we get this thing, cost of tree will be at most the cost of optimum. In fact, it is uh, strictly less than, it is cost of optimum minus E, but we can always ignore that edge. Okay? So cost of tree is at most the cost of the optimum tree. And now we apply this third and fourth equations together. And what you get is that cost of H will be at most twice the cost of optimum. Okay. And hence we get that it is a two approximation. So here alpha will be equal to 2. So H was the tool which we obtained finally, and it is at most double the cost of the optimum. Okay. So here we have a two-factor approximation algorithm. So any questions on the algorithm or the uh, whatever correctness analysis? So, okay, so they're using very simple techniques. We have designed this uh, approximation algorithm for traveling salesman problem. The only two, two things we needed was uh, this minimum span tree and a DFX swap. Okay. And in fact, using some advanced techniques, uh, there is a better approximation algorithm, but it has factor 1.5 instead of two. Okay. And in fact, it is the best known, but due to lack of time, I won't be able to go into it. It will take a, eat up a lot of time. So it's known as some Christophilus algorithm. Uh, that's not what we are going to do. Huh? Okay, and this is in fact the best known. We don't know anything better than 1.5 uh, factor approximation for TS. Okay, so if this is clear, uh, we'll move on to the next problem in approximation algorithms. So let me just change the slide.
Okay, I hope you can see. Uh, uh, next problem. Okay, so this is another problem which we covered during reductions. Okay, I think we gave a reduction from uh, set cover to vertex cover. Or uh, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Okay, or maybe independent set it was. Okay, so I'll just recall what this set cover problem is, uh, which is the universe, you are given some universe of N elements and a collection of subsets. And so usually uh, you are just given these two things, universe and collection of subsets, there is no cost function. But in this case, we'll uh, tackle a more general version of set cover where you are given this cost function. So you are given this collection of subsets of U and you are given this cost function. So each subset maps to some positive real number or non-negative real number. Okay, so all this is given to you. So you are given this subsets S1, S2, SK and you are given the costs of all these subsets. And what the goal of this problem is, is that you want to find a minimum cost sub collection. And so you don't have to pick all of these. You have to pick some subsets with, that covers all the elements of U. Okay. So here's one example, uh, which is, let's say universe consisted of these five elements, one, two, three, four, five. And you are given these subsets of the universe, okay, S1, S2, S3, uh, where S1 is, let's say, it contains 1, 4, 3, and its cost is 5. S2 contains these elements, 2, 5, and its cost is 10. Okay, S3 consists of 1, 4, 3, 2, and its cost is 3. Okay. Now you have to pick some of these among this S1, S2, S3, maybe just one of them or two of them so that we cover all these elements, one, two, three, four, five. So this is our diagrammatic way of uh, representing this. So S2 contains two or five, so it is this red set. Okay, S1 consists of one, three, four, so it's this blue set. And S3, is of one, two, three, four. So it's this green set which we have. Five is not included here. Okay. So now what we want is, is that we want to include, uh, take the union of some two sets so that all these elements will be there in that union. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So if you just pick one set, Let's say I just picked S1. I won't be able to cover 2 or 5. S2, again, I won't be able to cover 1, 3, 4. And S3, I won't be able to cover 5. So I have to pick at least two sets from these. Uh, so either I could pick S1 and S2 because S1 union S2 will contain all the five elements, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And S2 union S3 will also contain all the five elements, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so S1 union S2 will be contained in U, its cost is, so S1 at cost 5, S2 at cost 10, so its cost will be 15, and S2 union S3, the union if you take, again it will contain all the 5 elements, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and its cost will be 13. Okay, but you can't pick S1 and union S3 because 5 is not contained in either S1 or S3. Okay. And obviously you want the minimum cost such subselection. Sub, sub okay. Because S1 union S2, the cost is 15. S2 union S3, the cost is 13. So in this case, we have to output S2 union S3, which is the minimum cost subselection. Again, it is an example of uh, NP-complete problem set cover because 
uh, set cover reduces to vertex cover. So in general, finding the minimum cost is difficult. And what you want is an approximation algorithm, the set cover problem. Okay, so there is some idea. Uh, let me go over it. So start from the largest set, okay, and consider all disjoint sets in decreasing order of size. Yeah, so, okay, disjoint sets. So you are picking disjoint sets every time? No. There may not be any disjoint set. Yeah, but the, you are close to the idea uh, is that we just apply this greedy approach. Okay, greedy we pick the sets. So there are two things here. One is you have to minimize the cost of the subsets. So that cost has to come into play somewhere. And you, you ideally you would want to pick minimum number of such subsets, right? Um, to cover the universe. So how do you pick those minimum number of subsets to cover the universe? So there are these two constraints and you have to somehow combine them two together. But the problem is that larger set will have may have cost very high. Okay, and that's what we don't want. So we have to combine the two things together. We want the minimum cost as well as we want to cover them in such a way that the minimum number of sets are used. So how are we going to bring the two of them together? So what we'll do is we will define this measure, uh, which is that the cost of cost effectiveness of a set S. Uh, so let's say you have picked these sets in your set cover. So it, we are applying a greedy approach. So we are picking one set at a time. And based on that, we'll pick our next set. Okay. So you need to make that decision how to pick the next set. So there a question again. Yes, there are clear. Yeah, first we will sort the set with respect to the cost of the set and then we will traverse by considering the first element and for each you check for the union okay so oh, what the idea seems to be is that to will sort based on the cost of the set okay then you take the minimum cost thing and then the next minimum and check for union. Yeah, that is a good idea. But uh, uh, so this runs into this problem is that you are ideally you want to pick the minimum number of sets, right? Because if you just look at the cost and, and ignore the minimum number of sets, then there could be a smaller collection which is not following the sorted order, but it is using less number of subsets than what you are proposing here. Okay. So 
so it's not that simple as well uh, okay so instead we will do this let's say we have picked some uh, sets in our set cover okay there's one more thing okay yeah so what we are doing is that let's say we have picked some sets in our set cover by this greedy approach okay and let's say it's not covering all the elements it has just covered certain elements are still uncovered okay so i'll say that c is the set of elements which are covered okay so this s minus c uh, are the uh, new elements okay so ideally what i want is that so let me explain you use this example is that this new set s it should cover a lot of the elements which are not already covered right only then uh, you can it is useful to include this set s in your set cover okay because let's say if you have covered certain elements and the new set just contains those elements then there is no use of including that set so you should rather include some set which contains elements which are not yet covered okay so what we want is if c is the set of elements which are already covered uh, then this s minus c set should be as large as possible okay at the same time we want to minimize the cost of s so the cost of s should be as minimum as, so when will this ratio be as minimum as possible when cost of s is small and s minus c is very large and that's exactly the conditions we are looking for right so if this ratio is minimized then we get both these conditions that s minus c is very large and cost of s is small okay so that's what we call the cost effectiveness of this set s and then we will use whatever sorting you want to do based on this cost effectiveness okay so both the conditions will be uh, achieved Cost of S is twelve, and C, which is the set of elements already covered, has just two elements, and the original set has five elements. So this S minus C will have three elements: one, six, and eight. So the cost effectiveness of s will be 12 by 3 it is equal to 4 okay so you do this for all the remaining subsets in your collection of subsets and pick the minimum cost effective set okay and there is one more thing which we do is that once you have picked this set you have to remember which elements are already covered okay so for every element in this new set s because the set s was chosen such that the cost of s would be minimum and it is covering as many new elements as possible okay so we'll just set the price of every such element to be this cost effectiveness okay so in this set one six and eight these are the new elements which were not covered by any okay so price of one will be four price of six will be also four price of eight will also be four so it comes here Okay. 
Okay, any questions on this algorithm, right? So because we are, what we are doing is we are computing the cost effectiveness of each such set and then take the minimum of these, add to our set cover, and again repeat this procedure repeatedly. And it is a polynomial time algorithm because it, you are given this cost and initially what we'll set is C is the set of elements to be covered. Uh, so C is initially empty, right? Because we have not chosen any set in the set cover. That means no element is covered and slowly we add all these elements from this subset S. So initially we pick the subset S which has the minimum cost effectiveness. Right, and those elements will add as our covered elements. Again, pick the next subset which has the smallest cost effectiveness, and we keep on doing this until all the elements in the set are covered. Okay, and now we want to see uh, how it compares with the optimal set. And this analysis is a little bit involved, it's a bit tricky, uh, but you can try to think about it. We'll see it in the next class. Okay. Yeah, any questions? Yeah, we have a question here. Okay. Uh, would it not be too costly? Why do you say that? Uh, because this is all part of our input, right? It's just a simple greedy approach. Every time you are picking some subset, and so uh, no, so the cost effectiveness. Uh, you compute for all the subsets initially and then you sort based on their cost effectiveness. So there is nothing too costly in this approach. Okay, one more question. Here S by C is two. Uh, where are you saying it? Uh, yeah. So no, S by C is three because C is the set of elements already covered. So two and four are already covered, and S minus C will be three elements: one, six, and eight.
uh, no sorry so this is this should be already covered yeah okay. this is some typo okay. so c is the set of elements which are already covered and we are looking at s minus c What I wanted to say was that S minus C is the set of elements not yet covered. So I missed it. Okay. Then I'll stop this meeting now. There are no more questions. Yeah. See this cover thing next class.